Chapter 3 The following day, early in the morning, I told my grandmother that I was going to the neighboring village of Mayo, to borrow a book from a friend of mine, and I wanted to catch her before she left with her mother for their farm. She did not argue and she amazingly again, let me leave in peace. So, at six o'clock in the morning I left with the book that I already had, hidden under my pullover, and went straight to the cocoa plantation. There I sat in the clearing reading. That is where my friends from above found me. Somehow they had known that I was there because they arrived at 7.30 o'clock, instead of 10 o'clock when I had expected them to arrive. I climbed in the flying vessel and we left again for Mount Cameroon, whose peaks were again covered in fog. Throughout we had gone through the same rituals of greetings, of walking in line through the vessel, and of sitting down. Nothing seemed to be left to chance or to be taken lightly. They all looked very solemn. After some small conversation, I was again taken into the room with the operating table, strapped on it and put to sleep. This time, I woke up while still lying on the table, and opening my eyes, I saw one of the little aliens standing close by, pressing buttons and making some of the instruments to silently disappear in the walls. I did not like being alone in that cabin with him, and felt fear beginning to creep deep within me, I had to join the others as soon as possible. So I did something I did not believe I was capable of doing, despite my fear, I reached out. The small alien, who had been left to awaken me, was startled when I extended my arm and grabbed his elbow from behind. He turned round, looked at me and withdrew from my grasp, then he rushed out while I began examining the hand that had touched the alien. He soon came back with the brown alien, who smiled broadly and said, I see that you are awake. By now I was sitting up, so I put my feet down and stood up. He asked me to follow him and walked out, with me right behind him, furtively looking behind to be sure that the little alien was not following us, he was not. No matter how often I saw those little aliens, I could not get used to them or be relaxed with them like I was with the others. I was simply afraid of them. Soon the space vessel began its descent toward our plantation. I was given the usual mint-like drink, the dosage of which was being made smaller and smaller. For I noticed that the glass this time was smaller, more like a shot glass really. It looked like the ones used at my grandmother's church for the communion wine. After our goodbyes, my friends left me and I went back home, busying myself with the day's chores left me by my old grandmother. The Plan of Creation the plan of salvation. The eternity trip and divine realization. That night, when I finally went to bed, I accessed the message very quickly and easily. It said, Good evening, Desiree. In today's message, we shall begin by telling you in detail about the conflict between us and the renegades. The people of earth should therefore pay great attention to our explanation and should study it meticulously, after reading the book that will be written by the young man from France. We want to be sure that Lucifer and Satan do not succeed this time in their work of sabotage. Yes, as we have explained, our work has been sabotaged by them on many planets, and if sometimes we have left the people of other colonies to finally do as they wished in the end, we will never completely stop warning the people of Earth, ever. Because our work of creation on this planet was a twofold one, there was both a scientific and a spiritual reason to it, with an exoteric aim and also esoteric purposes. For not only did we want to create a pure race made of our combined genes, but we also wanted to finally test the claims by our ancestors that our species, having been created by an eternal God, was also a species of eternal souls, like our God, and that we could also function like our God in our own right. And that as souls we could move from one world to another, from one dimension to another, from one plane of reality to another one, eternally. And not only that, but those who stayed behind us could actually monitor us, contact and communicate with us, and keep trace of each one of us from one plane of reality to another. As we had already succeeded in the creation of living beings, and proved the possible eternal prolongation of the existence of our bodies, and of the bodies of those beings that we created, now we wanted to prove the totally scientifically verifiable eternity of our souls and of those of any beings created using genetic materials taken from ourselves. We also wanted to prove the affirmation by our holy scriptures that each of us could realize a divine state by himself through the divine mysteries. 
We had prepared the required environments and facilities according to all the writings, plans and descriptions that they had left us. All that was left for us to do was the experiment itself. It was, that once the biological bodies had been created, souls from our world would come and inhabit those bodies, leaving our first bodies behind for an eternal trip of different lives, in different bodies, through different planes of reality, with the ultimate aim of realizing our divine state as permitted by the one true God. The understanding was that such trips could also be interrupted later, if wished on our own conscious request to the supervisors. There was also an added challenge, those who went on such eternal trips should try, under total amnesia, with absolutely no help from the supervisors, to access their own divine powers, and create new beings, new worlds and perform new acts, with no other help than our divine laws and the mysteries of those laws. Thus we considered that the creation of biological bodies in which the traveling souls could live, was no big challenge, compared to that of the transmigration of souls which was to be a totally never attempted experiment until that time. So even though we could tell you about our creation work on other planets, we only give you an account of this earth and its inhabitants for it is our highest ever success concerning our creation works on the whole. You see, there are many creations, many worlds now still unknown and innumerable to man on earth. But we know some of them, and all those we know are ours. When it comes to earth, every human being that has ever been born, and every human being that lives now on earth is accounted for, to us, known to us and monitored by us. The same shall be of those of the future, on this earth while it is still ours according to the galactic law till we decide not to continue transmigration work here. Know then that all those souls that come to inhabit human bodies through birth come from the planets of our united intergalactic alliance. They are divided into many groups and come to earth with many different aims, missions and other duties. No other beings from another world or another alliance can live in a human body through birth unsupervised by us. Our methods, which are absolutely unique to this universe, ensure that there is no other way except through us. Of course as you now know, beings from other worlds can come to earth, but they can only do so by artificial means and they are forced to remain in their own alien bodies. Also there is the eventuality of beings traveling different planes of reality deciding to experience life on earth. Those beings usually decide to take over a human body, weaken the rightful soul and squat in the body thus temporarily subdued. That is what you call sometimes possession, demonic or otherwise, and sometimes walk-ins. Those can be chased away and ordered or forced to leave. But there is a minority of other groups of highly evolved beings that also come to earth, through birth, for their own purposes. Those are beings with whom we have many agreements and who we allow to be born on earth. They can be born normally, then when what they had come to do had been achieved, they would leave. They are absolutely not involved in the long-term experiments described here, and their destinies are totally different from those of normal human beings who are part of the eternity programs. They never truly emotionally attach themselves to their human partners and children like those of our programs do. That is because they are not obliged to go through the process of forgetting their former state and thus they always know who they truly are. Now, not just anyone comes to live on earth. To begin with, all those who decide to go on the eternity trip must be fully grown adults in our world. They must be highly educated and they must not be insane or criminals. They must not have any dependents of minor age, or have any debts to pay to our society. They must not be a reigning monarch and if they are, they must have someone readily available, and willing to replace them. They must agree to travel totally alone, and not to depend on anyone else for their progress. They must accept responsibility for all their acts and abide by the rule set. For that, a contract and many forms must be signed, and a battery of tests must be undergone before proceeding any further. To begin with, they all have to start the trip on equal terms, for that they have to go through a process that renders them amnesiac during each particular life cycle. By that we mean that they must agree to temporarily forget all their scientific knowledge, all their erudition and the privileged lifestyle that they had had in our world, and begin at if they had never learnt or known anything, or lived anywhere else before then they must agree to live a minimum of 10,000 earth years which are divided this way. A. 
a minimum of 10 Earth lifetimes if, during their life on Earth the secret of eternity is discovered. b. and, or, a minimum of 100 Earth lifetimes without the benefit of the eternity surgical operation, in order to learn the divine laws anew, and to also willingly abide by them. In fact, the true success of the experiment depends on how one adheres to the divine side of their life, for only obedience to divine laws, and the willingness to live one's life according to them, would allow the person to definitely progress from one plane of reality to another one continually. Then there is the choice of the future gender, profession, religion, skin color, country and continents where they would live for a success in every phase of the experiment. Some people decide to work in groups, so family arrangements are made before the trip. Roles are usually swapped, so one person can find themselves the son or daughter of someone who had been their own child in a previous life cycle. Nothing is left to chance, even the number of children, marriages, illnesses, accidents and the type of deaths are arranged, because all of these contribute to the soul's progress in the experiment. Also there are the watchers and the guardians who accompany each person, and that is where God and science meet and interact. For every human being there are four watchers from us and four from God. They are one guardian whose duty is to care for the person to ensure that they do not die accidentally before their destined time. This is the one who protects the person, changing situations as needed and saving them from all kinds dangers. This one is from God. We have no power over him. Then there is the advisor for the good of the person and all things good and propitious for him. This is the one known as the good inclination, the holy guardian angel. He is the one to whom is entrusted the divine doctrine that is personal to that person on the day, when they formally realize their divinity on earth using the divine art of the mysteries. There can be as many religious doctrines as there are human beings. All of which complement each other and are never contentious about the matters of heaven. This particular private doctrine is the one by which the realized individual must conduct himself for the rest of that life. By it they shall also be judged for that life. The holy guardian angel, also gives the person instructions that they should give to those other human beings who have not been searching, in order to help them also realize their own divinity. This watcher has to regularly report back on the individual's progress. He too is from God. Then there is also the tempter for all things evil. This one is the one who will tempt the person and do everything to make the person abandon their quest and infringe laws. He is the one called the evil inclination. He also reports back on everything that the person does that is bad and contrary to the divine law. He too is from God. Finally there is the neutral watcher who reports not only on the individual, but on the work of both watchers to ensure the fairness and accuracy of their reports. He too is from God. But we too have our own counterparts of these. It is not necessary for humans to know how this is done. The very first people that came that way were thus the first couples that were created. And others began to arrive when these couples began having children. That is why human beings were ordered to multiply, for if they do not multiply, the whole soul transmigration experiment is slowed down, and if the whole population of earth died, this would have to be abandoned until other beings are successfully created again. Why souls must come to earth for divine realization? Then why, would you ask, did we need to come to earth and try to accomplish a feat that could well be attempted in our own galaxy? Now pay a great deal of attention to what I am about to say, for I am about to explain why man is on earth and why we are here giving this message to humanity today. In the study of their predecessors' divine records, our ancestors discovered and proved to themselves beyond doubt that there is a God, and they gave to that God a four-barreled name which can be identified by its initials of YHWH. And to them, no matter how they tried they could not find anything else that could be defined or be given the same title. Thus they concluded that there could be only one true God, and that God was eternal. The more they studied the matter, they could not allow the thought to enter their minds that there was any other God than the Eternal One they had discovered. They acknowledged His unity, loved Him, began to revere Him and sanctify His name. Nothing bearing the name of God was destroyed. They also had the same basic commandments that were to be given later to all genetic beings that they created. 
To acknowledge the existence of God was to affirm these words, I am the Lord, thy God. And to even allow the thought to enter their minds that there were other gods besides that God, was to violate the commandment that says, You shall have no other God before me. They reckoned that such a person denied the principle on which everything existing depends. To them, as to us, God is one and cannot be separated. The Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit are one and cannot be separated. The Father is the thought, or all that is and all that can possibly be thought of, the Son is the divine spark that is in every human being. He is the entity that every person really is, the one that lives in the human body. He is the Word of God, and the Holy Spirit is the power by which the Word of God acts, through which His Word comes and is accomplished. That is God. He is one in such a way that, none of the things to which the term one can be applied, which exist in all the universes is like His unity. Or a unit as a species comprising many units. His unity is such as there is no unity like that one, anywhere in existence. The Father and the Holy Spirit, or in other words, the thought and the power has no physical body, therefore he has no bounds, no limits. His power is infinite and unceasing. That can be seen in the fact that the universes, the whole existence, the whole infinity do not cease moving, revolving, being, existing and living. His power is not the energy of a physical body, and since he is not a physical body, all ills and accidents applying to physical bodies do not apply to him, so as to distinguish him from another being. So in the beginning was the Word of God, the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and in the beginning, the Word became flesh according to the will of the Father, the Word was one and was called the only begotten or spirit Messiah. By it he spoke and his creation was. And his creation could physically hear him and see him. The Word or the only begotten cannot speak independently or without the thought or the power. So the Word spoke the thought, using, and thanks to the power. These are one and united. So it is impossible that he can be anything but one. And to realize this truth is to affirm and accept the words, the Eternal, our God, is one God. No one can see the Father physically except by beholding the Son, neither can anyone accept the Son and deny the Father, for they are one and the same, the Son and the power are subjected to the Father. But anyone who claims to have seen both the Father and the Son is a liar, for this is impossible, bringing a distinction between them is to deny his unity. The fact that the Father is not a physical body distinguished apart from the Son is explained in these words, know therefore that the Lord, he is God in heaven above and upon the earth beneath, and a physical body is not in two places at the same time. And the Son is the Spirit Messiah. So here, O man is wisdom. Each and every one of you is the Son, as there is a spark of the Father in every humanoid being, in every man, woman, and child. Each of you has the Son living within them. Realizing one's divinity can only be effectuated by accessing the Son who is the Spirit Messiah within. Once the Messiah within has been accessed, one can talk to the Father through the Son face to face. In other words, one becomes truly the Son, and can call himself so. To every man is given power to develop powers as those of a God, and become as a God. For the kingdom of God is within every man. Not every particular being, living or dead can be given the title of son slash daughter of God. But any one human being who has realized his divinity and accessed God within, is entitled to call themselves the son or daughter of God. So, not one human being that has lived, lives or will ever live can be designated as the only son of God, not by himself or by any group of people. You are all sons and daughters of God, and you are all one, since you are all but sparks of the Father. Truly, it is beyond the mental capacity of a human creature, composed of body and soul to obtain a clear knowledge of the truth of the divine existence of the Father. He has no conjunction and cannot be separated. He has no location or dimension. No ascent or descent. No right and no left. No front or rear. No sitting or standing position. He does not exist in time or in space, because he has no beginning of days, and no end of years. He does not change for there is nothing that would affect a change in him. He does not die. He cannot be said to have folly or wisdom as a distinct attribute, or passion, or frivolity, 
or joy or melancholy. Neither does he have a distinctly separate speech like that of all beings with bodies of flesh in all the universes as it is said, above, there is neither sitting nor standing, neither rigidity nor relaxation. Finally and most of all, he is neither male nor female. The Father can only be seen in the Son, and by that we must include both the male and female of the human race who are both children of God and are equal in his eyes. Therefore, he or she who wants to see and know God must look within themselves and nowhere else. So if I must repeat it again in order to convince the doubters, it was a perfectly physical and scientific creation that was effectuated on earth by teams of scientists who came from another galaxy. They were called sons of God because, they were seen to come down and go back into space in flying space machines, which the primitive prophets called chariots or clouds. So all people who have lived in our galaxy, are people who were first created in a universe which is seven universes away from this one that we all share now. This we know because we do have proof. The same goes for all people who have lived, who are living and who shall live on earth in the future, they were first created and have first lived in our galaxy. Humans are simply transmigrated souls from our home world whose name I am not at liberty to reveal. There, one of our days equals one thousand earth years as we calculate our time. Know therefore that prior to transmigrating to earth, you were all, each and every one of you, as technologically advanced as those who live in our home world now. The Council of the Wise, Creation of our Lucifer Our government decided that as we had virtually done everything that was necessary to render our lifestyle one that could be termed as eternally paradisiacal, we should test our claim that we loved God. To see if all of us who claimed to love Him would still do so, or wish to seek and obey Him and be interested in realizing their divinity. If we were sent to live in another world and on other dimensions, if we momentarily lost our memories and were not aware of who we truly were, and of how we had previously lived, would we still love him? And the idea of the experiment came, to create or adapt a planet where the beings of our world, or souls, could come and live. Then create bodies, composed of elements totally different from the ones our bodies were composed of, inside which we would live then we would be sent and be taught about our God anew. Those of us who loved, obeyed and accepted Him should be allowed to come back to our galaxy with a perfect knowledge of what we would have learnt, experienced and lived, with the complete memory of who we would have been. We have the power to do this. And with that we also would test the actual possibility of the transmigration of souls from one universe to another, from one body composed of different elements to another composed of elements alien to the previous ones, and from one time zone to another. Most important of all, the aim was also for us to realize our divinities, by seeking God within, which was the best of all these endeavors. The testing of our love for God was necessary, as with all the wars and dissensions we had had with the newcomers, doubts still existed with those who had allied themselves with us. This test was ordered by divine command through our prophets. Through our prophets we also learnt that there is also a side of the divine realization which is for God, the Mighty One, only. It is that God, having created everything, wanted to experience what He created in different places, at different times, in different dimensional realities, which are all infinite and eternal, just like God Himself. By creating man in His own image, he could thus experience different facets of that which he created through his own children, different sparks of himself. So what every man woman and child experiences, is also experienced by God, in the perspective of those different persons, thus again the order for human beings to go, and multiply. Every human being that exists also creates from the moment he can think coherently, and by realizing his divinity, man assumes his divine powers, subdues everything that he has created during the many lifetimes lived encompassing all his transmigrations, and makes all those creations subject to God and his law, thus giving the ultimate power and glory to God the Mighty One, over all that he has created, and which is therefore his. Of course, our governments are organized like those of earth, with members holding different positions. Their primordial activity was to praise and worship God, that came before any of their government duties. They organized a special council to deal with all affairs concerning the new transmigration project, it was called the Council of the Wise. 
among them were many eternal beings who had been appearing and disappearing in our world for as long as we could remember, and who established themselves definitely amongst us when we reached our space exploration era. Again this is where God and science met with us, for the first time. Later those who had come from Draconis and Procyon and had allied themselves with us came to also increase the ranks of the members of that council. With them had come one who at first refused to reveal his real name and asked to be addressed by the title of Lucifer or Giver of Light. He had adopted the name of one other ancient creature mentioned in our ancient religious scriptures. I know that I have already named him earlier on, but I want to tell humanity how he had first come to our notice. This being when he arrived, gave some light to a legend that had always been, even in the annals of our ancestors, which claimed that the very first being that was created by God, and that was nearly like God still existed, he was an eternal being and had visited our home world several times, even before our time. And he told us that he was that very same being and he very readily told us about his creation. According to him, God decided to create a being resembling him or in other words, one almighty being just like him, but one that could be seen. That being was him, to whom God had given the title of Lucifer, but who later told us that his real name was Kingu in the world where he had been created. According to him in making him, God made him so similar to him that he did put but a slight limitation to his powers. This limitation made Lucifer inferior to the sun within. By that I mean that in creating him, God cautiously used a different mystery or power, but did not use a spark from himself as he did much later. And so, the sun could take away part or all of Kingu's powers at will and or even terminate his life altogether. God, however had the intention of giving him power to have access to the spark later, Lucifer's own subsequent actions deprived him of that gift, forever. We hope you will understand this well. The creation of Lucifer was similar to the creation of our ancestors' first Adam with the difference that Lucifer's body was made of different elements from the earth, water, air and fire of which man is made. These very different elements which were used made him an eternal being outright, that means he could never die unless God, and only he, willed it. Imagine a large eternal bonfire, and a twig that can only be set alight by that bonfire, the twig once lit can set alight other objects. The flame is the same, but with the difference that only the bonfire has the power to light the twig or to extinguish it by engulfing it in its power. The twig should never assume the power of extinguishing or lighting the bonfire, because the twig being small and inferior to the bonfire, will always burn off and be consumed, while the eternal bonfire will always endure. So Kingu, Lucifer, even though he had that power that was nearly as similar to that of his creator, he was also totally inferior to him. Now after him, Lucifer says that an infinite number of similar mighty beings were created, some of them were equal to him, others were created in an order that went decreasing. In the same way the powers and knowledge these were given were also in a decreasing order. There were ten orders of beings created as we have come to know them. 1. The High Oath. 6. The Malachim. 2. The Orphanim. 7. The Elohim. 3. The Aralim. 8. The Bene Elohim. 4. The Shashmalim. 9. The Cherubim. 5. The Seraphim. 10. The Ishim. We consider ourselves to be Ishim in the divine order we attain when we realize our divinity, and our language is the same ancient Hebrew language that Adam spoke, the Adamic Hebrew. The High Oath, Lucifer being the very first of them, according to himself, are in the highest order above which there is but the order of God, that is why it is said by the prophet in your Bible that, the high oath, or living beings, are beneath the throne of glory. All these also like Lucifer were made inferior to the sun within man, or they were made without the sun within, according to God's wisdom. But after a very long time, Lucifer who was a very proud and arrogant being, seeing how powerful he was, decided that he no longer needed to worship or be submissive to the Father God, and was filled with extreme anger. He hated worshipping and reasoned, why should God be worshipped instead of me? Why should I worship him instead of him worshipping me? And so he led a rebellion among these beings, telling them to worship him because he was the very first being and beyond him, nothing else that could be seen did exist that was higher than himself. He told this story very candidly, as if it were just a little dismissible act. 
he said that many of the mighty beings followed him and rebelled with him, deciding to become gods in their own right, and excluding the Father God altogether. But there was one, there, among these mighty beings, who was called Yahweh, who led the other mighty ones who did not rebel, and they fought and vanquished Lucifer and his armies. Yahweh, as you will note, is the name that was chosen by the leader of our council of the wise. Now, the Father God who had created Lucifer and knew his thoughts and actions reflected, that all the people he had created were not good. That is why the plan of salvation was devised as exposed earlier on. For that rebellion, Lucifer was banished with all his armies to our world, that is, to this universe, never to find his way back to the place of honor he held in the beginning. And never again could he have the chance to access the Spirit Messiah, or the Son within as had been God's intention to give him. In fact, the possibility of the power of the Son within was taken away from him altogether, which Spirit, God in his wisdom had wisely withheld at his creation, because through the Spirit Messiah Lucifer could again find his way to his former glory. Now at the time when Lucifer arrived on our planet, Yahweh was already living among our own people. He seemed to have realized his divinity and his power was virtually unlimited, and because he had accessed the Spirit Messiah within himself, we gave him the attribute of Messiah. He, too, had claimed to have been created in the beginning, but second to Lucifer, and nobody knew how or when he had come to be among you, only that he had always been there. We believe he is the same one who fought and vanquished Lucifer's armies at the beginning. He was already at the head of the Council of the Wise and just about the oldest living person in our galaxy, and he was already doing amongst us the work we did amongst the first humans, which, we wish you humans to continue doing. He taught about the Father, saying that he was the Son, but that he was also submitted to the Father and had to pray him for everything. He said that he could not act without being motivated by the Father, because if the Father did not think, he could neither speak, move, nor act. We believed him, and now with the declaration of Lucifer, we came to believe that this was truly the same that was created second to Lucifer. But unlike Lucifer, he told us that we also were all sons and equal to him, for we had God within us. Lucifer's War Now Kingu, or Lucifer, being in the position in which he was, who also knows the story of creation and who knows about God, was again seized with jealousy the more he listened to Yahweh, and the more he observed the veneration and respect in which we held our Yahweh, who in our world was venerated as our Messiah. He realized that, such a person appearing amongst a less civilized race would be worshipped as God, even though they would live, talk and do things together with him. So Lucifer, right from then on, began to openly voice his doubts about the existence of the Father God, just like he had done before. And do not forget that he had already said himself that he had been created by God the Father. With those doubts came anger, hatred, and extreme jealousy. Again he was jealous because here, too, he deemed and considered himself equal to our Yahweh. And here he hated worshipping God, believing that when we worshipped God, we also worshipped our Messiah. He could just not get out of his mind that such honor was being given to a being that he could see, and that being was not him. As you know now, the other activities that the members of the Council of the Wise pursued were science and government. All these people having an incommensurable knowledge, they no longer learnt. Instead they created. They created beings of different sizes and looks and color, and personalities and of different elements. Not only that, they could manipulate whole planets, they organized and placed them in a way that they remained in their proper spheres and moved thanks and in concert to the movements of each other. They had such a technological level that everything was reduced to the state of mind, that is, sometimes one could create anything as fast and as far as the mind could think and see it. The limit of their creative abilities went as far as they could think them. But Lucifer even after having been made a member of the Council of the Wise, still could not shake the feeling of envy, hatred and jealousy, that he felt toward our Yahweh, and was consumed with the burning need to detach himself from his authority and influence in the Council of the Wise, and to become a god in his own right. He therefore opposed him in everything there was. He opposed every one of his suggestions and advanced his own, which he always thought were better. As this council was a kind of political one, a kind of senate, he made himself leader of the party opposing Yahweh, 
and began actively perverting the minds of the otherwise good people that the others were. He told them that they needed not submit themselves to the laws of God, or of the council, or listen to Yahweh, as they had so much knowledge that they could create their own planets, make their own types of beings in them, and install themselves as gods over those beings, without having to render any account to Yahweh or to worship God. He told them that Yahweh was lying to them about the existence of God, and that they were all in fact worshipping none other than Yahweh himself, who wanted to remain supreme ruler over them, which is why he had not told them the truth. Many of these good people were soon tempted by Lucifer's offer to them to detach themselves and become gods in their own right, and angered by his proposes over Yahweh lying to them, they all began to listen to Lucifer instead of Yahweh and us, their old friends of the Council of the Wise. Because of Lucifer's machinations and through divine revelation, the plan of salvation in our world again became primordial. People of our world, as souls, would have to transmigrate from our home world to a totally different alien galaxy, out of their bodies into totally alien bodies composed of elements totally different from the former ones and into atmospheric environments totally different from the ones they had lived previously. These beings shall be in a condition of total amnesia, thus they shall not remember the astronomically high technological knowledge they had attained, and the things they could do. These people shall be reduced to such an infinitely low level that they will have to begin to learn everything from the beginning. In fact, their level of knowledge should be nil. Then they shall be told all over again about God, and about how He had created and loved them. Those who shall believe in, accept and love Him even though they have no way of verifying His existence, shall be allowed to go back and live in our home world. Some might go immediately after their stay on earth once their lessons had been learnt and are verified to have been learnt if they wish to go back. Those who, once they had transmigrated on earth, do not get the opportunity to hear or learn about God, those who know but doubt, and those who totally reject Him will be made to return and try again. After the allocated number of chances, there will be no more opportunities for them to transmigrate to earth. But even then life will continue. However, those who not only totally reject God, but make or teach others to do the same will be immediately stopped from returning altogether, and their transmigration cycle will be switched off irrevocably. Even then they will still have a choice. Once they return, their lives will no longer be extended and they will be allowed to die a natural death, never again having to the eternity operation, to be dealt with by God in whom we all still believe. They will be free to join the ranks of the fallen angels and thus become subjected to the authority of the lowliest man on earth. That is what we call eternal hell in our world. Yahweh the leader of our council of the wise decreed that if the first part of the scientific experiment was a success, he should come himself, in the same way as the other scientists. To make sure that the people created would only ever believe in and worship the one true God, the Eternal Father. Lucifer, when he heard the expose of the plan, immediately stood up and declared that he should be the one to go and be the teacher. He said, By what you have said, why should anyone have to perish? I was the first one that was created so I shall go and be the Messiah on earth. I shall be known as the only begotten and all those who shall safely come back, whether they believe in and accept God or not, whether they are very good or extremely bad, no matter how many crimes they commit, since they shall be in a different world, and shall be born into amnesia and live in an amnesiac world, will not be made accountable. In return, I want to be made God in that galaxy. I want it to be mine to do with as I please. Ah Yahweh said, wrong. That is the aim of the whole creation project, for many of you here are not perfect and present a great danger to our peaceful world, and to all the infinite and eternal system. The aim is to root out this evil of atheism and rebellion and to bring back the world of God to our universe the way it was, a happy world without unbelief, without hatred and dissent. So I decree that man, as the people of our home world shall be known, even though he shall be born amnesiac, he shall go out of earth with the perfect recollection of all his earthly life. And a faculty which shall be placed in him called conscience shall make that recollection a truthful one. Thus, man shall be judged by his own conscience, but shall remind him by playing back all his past deeds at the time of his coming out of earth. But we have the Son within each one of us. God within shall be the Redeemer. 
Lucifer again saw his chance of being God slip out of his grasp. For he was very sly, and if Yahweh had agreed, he would have sold the whole of humanity's birthrights just the same way as Esau sold his, later, to Jacob. Lucifer would have turned all the new creation to his side. He would have inherited the powers of the sun within, which powers were denied him at his creation and that he did not have at the time of his fall. Such powers accessed by such a person would have been deadly. There could never have been two gods, for the evil Lucifer would have taken the power of the sun and destroyed his creator. O man of earth, here is wisdom. Know that the death of any divinely realized Messiah was to be the accomplishment of the second part of the experiment on the scientific level. The return transmigration of the initial soul out of earth, and out of a human body back into its former world and element and into a body of the original world without any harm coming to it, and with the total memory of its life on earth. After Yahweh announced his decision, he said, Your free will starts here. All of you shall vote and choose which of the two of us, myself or Lucifer, you support. You heard what we both had to say. Elections were therefore held. Two-thirds of the people voted for Yahweh and a third voted for Lucifer. So Yahweh won. Lucifer, ferociously angry at again losing against his enemy Yahweh, called his followers to war. His decision was that they should kill Yahweh and do away with his rule over them, as he stopped them from realizing their dreams of becoming gods. That war, which did not involve just the population of one world, but of whole galaxies, was a horrible one, and Lucifer lost. The reasonable thing to do was to take away a third of powers with which Lucifer and his followers were endowed. They were chased from our galaxy, never to return, and were allowed to live in this galaxy of the Milky Way, but not to have human bodies, and neither with power and knowledge to create any as golems. Every single being that existed and was born after that time in our home world was to be subjected then to the test of salvation through transmigration, and that is why the humanoid creation expeditions began. Adam was thus created out of earth, water, fire and air, a perfect biological robot or golem, with everything you all know that composes the human body, and that was the divine way of first creating man, because in that way, he came with God within himself. That is why we always had to use our genetic materials for the creation, but as we have already said, he was not an adult when thus created, he was created as a baby of less than a year old. Then Yahweh, who was with us during that expedition, gave a transfusion of his own blood to the robot or golem. With blood running in its veins, the robot lost the cadaveric clay-like complexion of its skin, while its heart was started up, and began to beat. Genetic material was immediately taken from the newly created child, and through manipulation in our lab, Eve was created being made to grow as an embryo in one of our incubation machines. Yahweh, our leader had performed mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation on Adam as soon as he was created, thus at the same time, he insufflated part of his own soul and spirit into Adam to give him real humanoid sentience. That way all human beings share the breath of life and the blood and part of the soul and power of their creator perpetuated through birth. That was the foolproof way we ensured that Lucifer, Leviathan, Satan and Belial with their cohorts could not use an empty human body to place themselves in, in order to live naturally on earth and find the way back to the grace they had lost. They can only possess bodies but even the possessed are still inhabited by a soul and spirit from God. That therefore in great detail, is how events happened and it is the true account. Those who will get the story of the young man from France should very well consider the facts related here, before they make a final decision and choice. We, too, wish to give our side of the story. It is up to you, now, to make up your own minds. One final thing, Adam was different in that he talked within six months of being created. Now we shall stop for now. Come tomorrow to the cocoa plantation as usual, and we shall continue with our story from where we left, when Adam and his wife listened to Lucifer and the fallen watchers. If it seems to you that there appears to have been a repetition here, it was deliberate. You will understand when you get acquainted with the story of the man from France. We insist that you give this repetition in full, as it explains in detail what I had only broached on earlier in this message, and here our story today ends. Well, such a long speech. 
I began reflecting on what I had just heard, and fell asleep soon after saying my bedtime prayer, not even knowing whether I had understood everything or not. The following morning was December the 17th. I got up and stepped outside, and reflected about how my life had been turned upside down during the last three days. Everything now seemed unreal. I wondered how people could very simply go about their businesses, not knowing that every day I had been meeting and conversing with people from other galaxies. A young man on a bicycle stopped outside our house and stepped down. He went into the house and told my grandmother that my mother had sent a message that she would be coming to stay for a few days. That spelt trouble for me. One thing that I did not want was the house full of my brothers and sisters. It would no longer be easy to slip away and go to my meetings without being followed by at least one or two children. I just hoped that I would have the rest of the message before they came. Somehow I knew that my mother intended to spend Christmas with us. Please God, let it not be before the 22nd of December, that way they would not stay long. I prayed. When morning came, I was almost shaking with excitement and anticipation, and I barely ate. I told my grandmother that I needed to go for a walk at the cocoa plantation, and amazingly she made no objection even then. I took my set of keys and left, after asking her not to follow me because I wished to be alone. Besides, it seemed that there were going to be some sort of general meeting in the village late in the day, which she wished to attend and she wanted to be back from the farm in time for the beginning of the meeting. So I was reassured that she would not be tempted to follow me. I arrived at the farm at ten o'clock in the morning, just as the shiny space vessel appeared. 